in the previous lesson we had learned about convolution which is the fundamental uh, operation in convolutional neural networks so here we will take our discussion one step further and we will talk about a different version of that called padded convolution or padding so uh, if you recap in the previous video we had taken one 6 cross 6 image then convolved with a 3 cross 3 filter or kernel and we had got a result of 4 cross 4 and why was it 4 cross 4 because uh, first time we overlap this kernel over this window and take element wise multiplication and then add everything to get this pixel and we can shift it once twice three times and four times so fourth time it will be here so there are four arrangements possible not not more than that that's why we have four rows similarly it's a square so by the same analogy you can shift it once twice and thrice and one was the original position so vertically also we have four but in the modern uh, deep neural networks deep convolutional neural networks we have many many such layers so straight away with a small filter in this image you see that the size has decreased by two pixel six cross six to four cross four so imagine that uh, in every layer it's happening so every time it's decreasing and uh, if we have hundreds of layers then uh, the size of image will decrease considerably so that is one of the limitations that is shrinking size and the second point you will notice that uh, if you see this let me get rid of this if you look, look at this uh, yellow pixel in the top right then how many times it is used so once we take convolution from here the very first window then this is used so this is used in the computation of this one and next time we shift it here so it's not used and similarly it will not be used in any other calculation similarly when we shift down again it will not be used so this is just used, used once all the corner pixels are used once and all the side pixels are even used a few times but if you look at a central pixel let's say this blue one then this will be used multiple times one you can see this when we are here the filter is here second time uh, when the filter is here then filter is here three times straight away you can see then here also similarly here also here also so these are used a lot more times in the output so these contribute a lot more to the output than these pixels on the edges so this is another information loss so we are uh, losing out edge information since these are used very less frequently in the calculations and the central one are used a lot more times so these are two drawbacks so in order to overcome that what we do uh, we pad the input image with some pixels depending on the filter size and we will see exactly how much we need to pad so let's say we have extended it so this was originally 6 cross 6 this is still 3 cross 3 filter and we have padded one pixel on each side so if this was originally 6 cross 6 now what is the dimension of this padded image and now there is another question what should be pad in these pixels so there are multiple ways one is that you copy everything from these pixels to them and for this corner you can copy this one itself so this is copied here 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 or you can pad with zeros so this is also a very common convention to pad with zeros now what is the size of this image so this is six then on the left one and on the right one so width increases by two so now it's eight and uh, similarly height so now it's eight cross eight and now if you align this 
filter here then you can shift it five more times so you will get six pixels so now we get six cross six so input was this six cross six we padded it one pixel on each side to uh, make the image eight cross eight and we get six cross six which is same as original input so this problem is solved again uh, how much we need to pad will depend on this filter size and also you will see that now this this was the corner pixel that was used just once now this is used here similarly when you shift it again it will be used similarly when you take this one it's used take this one it's used so these are used a lot more times and, and information is uh, not lost that much so if you want to see it in action you can see that this blue region was originally the input image we have padded it on each side and now in the calculation you can see these edge pixels are getting used pixels on the edges and these uh, new padded pixels are also used in the calculation and this green and this blue they are of same size so, so if you compare the size of blue and green size is preserved now what should be the filter size so let's see so here we have n cross n input image and this filter size is let's say f cross f then uh, here what is the size it's n minus f plus 1 this is the final size now what we are doing so n minus f plus 1 is the final size but we have padded with let's say p pixels so here we have padded with 1 so p is 1 but in general we don't know what is the amount of padding so let's say we pad with p pixels on each side so width will increase by 2p and similarly this is a square case so height will also increase by the same amount and we are trying to find the padding so what is our goal our goal is that this result should be same as n that was the input dimension n cross n so this n n cancels so this f minus f plus 1 plus 2p is equal to 0 so 2p is equal to f minus 1 so p is equal to f minus 1 by 2 so this is the padding so let's say we have 5 cross 5 pixel 5 cross 5 filter then we would pad by 2 pixels on each side so this is the general formula and uh, we generally use odd sized filters and when this f is odd then f minus 1 is even so this will perfectly divide so there will be symmetric padding on each side if this uh, f is even then we will have asymmetric padding on one side we will have f minus 1 by 2 and other side we will have f by 2 so this is also one of the regions we use odd side filters uh, and another region is that it kind of gives you a sense of central pixel so this pixel is the central pixel if you have even sized pixel let's say 2 cross 2 there is no central pixel here so when we overlap this filter we are kind of having a notion of central pixel you know, although that is not a great reason for using odd filters so i hope uh, you understood this formula now uh, based on this padding uh, we have now two types of convolutions one is valid convolution which was when we did not pad anything so no padding so new size n prime is equal to n minus f plus 1 in this case we pad it so that n prime is equal to n so the size is preserved and we saw that we need to pad by f minus 1 over two pixels on each side in the next uh, lesson we will further extend this uh, notion of convolution and we will see that there is a notion of a stride also since this can be very computationally ex expensive uh, this is a small image but imagine uh, 2000 cross 2000 pixels image and then three dimensions and you are shifting by one step each time so that's called stride so here we were shifting by one so this one was called stride so stride was one but we can have 
higher values of stride also so we will see that in the next lesson